Thank you so much for joining in today on our daily devotion. We're going to read some scripture. We're going to see if we can make some sense of it in today's life. And then we're going to pray together. We're reading from Revelation today, which we have been doing for a few days now. And there is some pretty interesting imagery that we're going to bump into today. So let's get straight to scripture. Revelation 4, verses 1 to 11. After this, I looked, and there in heaven a door stood open. And the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will tell you what may t must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne, with one seated on the throne. And the one seated there looks like jasper and carnelian, and around the throne is a rainbow that looks like an emerald. Around the throne are twenty-four thrones, and seated on the thrones are twenty-four elders, dressed in white robes, with gold crowns on their heads. Coming from the throne are flashes of lightning, and rumblings and peals of thunder, and in front of the throne burn seven flaming torches, which are the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne there is something like a sea of glass, like crystal. Around the throne and on either side of the throne are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind, the first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with a face like a human face, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. And the four, four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Day and night, without ceasing, they sing, Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before the one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, singing, You are worthy, our Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. That's a lot of imagery. There's a lot going on, and I know that artists throughout the years have tried to capture some of what that vision is about. And if you look, and I encourage you, go online, search for, search for art that comes from this particular passage from Revelation 4, because it's quite fantastical. It's quite outside of our ability to understand. And sometimes art is the only way for us to express the real emotion that we are thinking or feeling. And in fact, that's important to think about, because although we are currently reading this in English, it wasn't written in English. And so what we're reading is translated from the original Greek in which it was written, which means this art form had to be massaged in some ways for us to experience it. And I think, unfortunately, kind of like if you were standing in front of the Mona Lisa and I was halfway across the world and you had me on the phone and you were describing that painting to me, I might appreciate it through your excitement, but it would lose something in translation. And we lose a little bit of it. And so as we read Revelation, truly, anytime we read anything in the Bible, remind yourself that there is some lost in translation, which means it invites us to open ourselves, to experience, to look for, to find the emotions behind the words. When they are describing God or the, the throne, I mean, we are assuming it's God, sitting on the throne with all of these gemstones and all of these colors, I can picture that the feeling of wonder is so overwhelming. The best that one can do is to describe in terms of gemstones and colors. And then we get these four living creatures who worship and praise and, and, and glorify God at all times. That seems quite absurd. In fact, the I picture in my head was quite difficult to describe. And yet, 
the overwhelming sense, the overwhelming emotion that I get when I read this is glory to God, who has existed forever, will exist forever. I mean, that idea in itself is a bigger idea than my finite brain can really wrap itself around. But these beings that are outside of our understanding, perhaps they have to be outside of our understanding before we can even wrap our heads around the fact that they are praising, are worshiping, are glorifying a God who's completely outside of our understanding. Don't be afraid of this sort of imagery. I, I've had many people tell me that they're afraid to read Revelation because they don't understand it and they can't wrap their heads around it. Don't be afraid of it. Step bravely into it and look for the emotion. Look for the deeper feeling. There are good reasons that parts of this are overwhelming. God's love for us is overwhelming. The fact that God created everything that has ever been and will ever be, that's overwhelming. Imagine the most indescribable, not understandable, overwhelming concept you've ever encountered. God is infinitely more, infinitely bigger, infinitely further outside of our understanding than even that. I love that we get tripped up in the imagery because it helps us to feel some of what the original writer was trying to do, was trying to help us to understand how overwhelmed he was in this moment, in this vision. Let us pray. Overwhelming God, when we try to describe you, we fall short. When we try to understand you, we realize how finite we are. When we try to connect our finite world to your infinite being, we hit all sorts of hurdles. So we ask for your continued grace and mercy as we muddle through the work of understanding and processing and getting more comfortable with who you are in our lives. And we ask also for a continued sense of childlike wonder as we start to glimpse some of the bits of how magnificent you are. Let us too cry out, holy, 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 as we glorify you, not being able to understand, but knowing that we must glorify simply in the wonder. Thank you, God for allowing us, even in our insignificant and incomplete ways, to start to draw near to you, to your holiness, to your infinite presence. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.